Hi everybody, my name is Lisa. This is my corner where I talk about art, I make art, I buy art supplies. Spring has sprung and to that end I spring cleaned my space. Uh, it was, oh yeah, well number one there was no wildlife because I was certain I had mice in here but there was no evidence to prove that so that was good. Um, the next not so good thing, which leads me really to the topic, I'm going to stop squiggling now, leads me to the topic of this video, which is a kind of a, an anti-haul. I'm not going to say a no-buy because I'm, I think you're always going to need to replace materials. Um, and maybe with some things, once they're done, they're done. I may never purchase them again. I might try something else. So I'm not going to commit to something I can't follow through on so it's things that I'm definitely not going to buy even though they're very very tempting things I'm not going to buy again so and the other thing <laughs> before I go on is when I did this massive spring clean I realized that there were things in here I'd completely forgotten about I'd I you know you pick I'm picking through stuff going I forgot about you when did I buy you I could have done with you a couple of months ago. So um, I've tried to organise it in a way that incoming doesn't get overwhelmed by chaos. So um, I've got everything off the floor because I had all my paints on the floor because I thought it was more accessible. It actually wasn't. Um, not really. <laughs> and I sorted through paper. And that's where we're going to start. So the first... What I wouldn't buy again and what I bought in a sort of a rush. This. It's the Etcher. 100% cotton. It's an A6 uh, watercolour cold pressed paper. Little notebook. I get there in the end. So this has been everywhere, hasn't it, folks? This has been all over. Everybody seems to have this chap or a version of it. Um, it. And it was by no means cheap. It was $13.99 for an A6. It has, okay, pluses. It has a very attractive feel. It's a lovely size for just if you're going to go and hit the road and going to do some plein air, like I don't do, but see? Look at that. Just throw that into your bag. A couple of those, um, you know, those brushes with the um, water reserves on it. You're good to go. It's wonderful. However, what I found was, now the first piece I did was this. And I used watercolours, polychromos pencils, gouaches. Oh, listen, everything short of. I threw everything that I had at it because I wanted to test drive it, I wanted to see how it felt. And that was great because I hadn't gone in with masses of water. I done it was mostly sort of dry brush and I used the gouache quite thickly just to sort of create texture and strokes and things. However, the next thing that I did was this. I have to talk about something that I used on this. Just hang on one second. Okay, so I'm back now. I'm back now and I'm destroying the place. This, this is a, um, a sketch in gouache and watercolours of Southport Beach from the pier. Now I used, I just threw water at that and I used these guys, Echo Line, which I bought for 6 99 okay, for a pack of one, two, three, four, four, I think there's five, five in a pack from TK Maxx reduced to 6 99 so I got two packs. Listen, do you, do you hear we're talking about no buys and low buys? So I got the violet and I got pinky, that lovely indigo blue. These are gorgeous. These are absolutely, I'm in love. And I will definitely be buying these again. Right, so um, I started one of these up here and it's beautiful, vibrant, it's an ultramarine. And then I went over it again with more watercolour. I was throwing water down on it. And the surface 
So I started to pill, you know, as I was putting different washes, I was, I was letting the wash dry between layers, <clears throat> but this was just lifting. And there's definitely a texture on the surface of the paper now. And because there was such a large wash for the sky, I notice it. And it really, really disrupted. What would you call it? It disrupted my, my brush moving across it. Right. So that's what it did. It disrupted how my brush moved across it and I was getting so frustrated and I know a good workman never bl blames its tools but I did not enjoy this and for 13.99 I know it's only the second time out with it with something but 100% cotton do you know what maybe my expectations were pitched way too high as to what it could handle maybe is is expensive necessarily better you tell me because um, I'm not I'm not buying this. I won't be purchasing this again. You know, I'm going to put it through its paces a few more times. I don't want to dump on it completely, but I, um, you know, I was a bit annoyed. I'll be honest. I've been really looking forward to it. I was so hyped. Um, I'd seen so many people praise it to the skies and it, it didn't come through for me. Will you please let me know your findings or your feelings on this? Because I, I'd love to hear what you think. Maybe, maybe it's me. I have to manage my expectations. Now, in other news. In other kind of, did the internet make me buy it? Will I buy it again? <coughs> now, I'm this stuff. I don't know how to pronounce it. Hanimula. Hanimula? Hanimula. And it's, this is a hot pressed. Which is something I'm not naturally drawn to because I kind of really do like the effects of dry brushing on watercolour paper. I really love it. Um, I love the graininess. I love the texture. But somebody suggested that this was in particular very good for using with watercolours and polychromous pencils. Uh, get a smoother surface with the polychromous pencils, able to blend them easier. Easier. And generally all the rest of it. Again, I can't, geez, you know, I don't remember how much this was. I got it on Amazon. Maybe it was nine quid. It's an A4. Um, just done a bit of a wash with some moss colour there. And it's all right. It's all right. Don't know how the world I feel about it. But again, this I'm going to use this for a few other things. But I'm looking forward to it. And it replaces... Oh, looks. Where is it now? Oh. Yeah, here we are. Hang on. It's replacing this chap. Right, so it was by the Langton. It was their um, hot-pressed paper. And it. I'd, I'd made some marks on it. And I used very lightly an eraser on it. And it, it literally tore through it. So I don't know if that was about the quality of the paper or about me not understanding um, hot pressed. Because like I said, I usually go for cold pressed. But anyway, so we'll see how that works out for me. Now, two surprises from my husband. The first of these, making everything rock. Okay, don't be seasick. The first of these is uh, he gallivants across the globe, sort of part of his work. Well, it's mostly around Europe. Um, but recent events have put the mackers on that. So um, he was working in Germany and he was coming through an airport in Germany and he goes, rings me up. Because there's a paper shop here. Do you want anything? And I'm like, what like W. H. Smith? What are you talking about? And he goes, No, it's a paper boutique. What's one of them? I was like, Okay. I said, Go in, have a mooch around, call me back, and we'll discuss it. So um, I did a quick Google about the airport he was in and what was in it. These guys. 
Fabriano, yes. Uh, now, I wouldn't normally... Now, again, Fabriano, you hear so much about it. So he goes in, he goes, what colour paper and stuff? I said, get your credit card now and bring me home stuff. So um, this was the first purchase, which is, um, let me see, it is 20, it's a 90 pound paper, watercolour paper. And it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I've done swatches on it because it's that thing of feeling intimidated by it. So I just started with some gouache swatches. They look so vibrant. And then I did a load of nonsense over in the back with a load of stuff that I bought. Things. It's lovely. It's really nice. It's lovely quality. So he got me that. <clears throat> I wouldn't have bought that for myself in a million years. That was £20. Yes, indeed. Then he got me this on another trip through and it's there um, formed. So it's those sort of boards glued around the edges. Looking forward to that as well. And that is, that's, these are both cold pressed. That's £140. So there's lots of, lots of, use because they're so expensive but I'm trying not to be precious really am I'm trying so hard but something tells me to just you know until I'm absolutely sure and I've got an absolute plan don't go ruining them so that's all the paper um okay so more talk of paper but kind of in a different context I have been trying to work out how to make prints of things that I've done. Um, there's one in particular. This is a portrait of my granddaughter, Iris. So, right. So, I gave my daughter the original, but her other granny and great granny, <clears throat> and my mum, the other great granny, all wanted a copy. So I got printer i tried to print it out in different ways on on the little printer that we have here is absolutely you know pointless because it's just uh inkjet i think the process is it just goes backwards and forwards like that so i thought right i contacted a friend who's a professional photographer and he said i'm going to put the name for it up here glisse just a glide isn't it i think anyway he said that's if you want a really good, decent print, try that method. But he said he's a photographer. He doesn't know how it works for fine art, for art materials. So I went online. I'm going to put the name of the place that I used up here. And I am over the moon with the result. It is. Now, what you do is, the process is you scan it. You scan the picture you want to use. You upload it to them. In this particular instance, I've had it printed on Canson Aquarelle watercolour paper. So you've got the grain of the cold press paper through it. It gives it even more of a texture and a look. And um so pleased. So everybody's getting one of these for Mother's Day. <laughs> I'm Flavour of the Month. So that's great. They were £17 each. They're not cheap. They're worth it. Um, I certainly, it's not something that I would do with every single, and I don't know how many runs I would do with something. It would have to be, I mean, this is very special because it's, it's very personal and they're gifts and I want them to look right. Economically though, I think if, if you're, if you're going to make a, a long run of something, I think unless you're a really established artist and you know your stuff is going to sell, to build in the price of that and still have a profit yeah i don't think i'm in that league yet but over the moon overjoyed with that so happy and um i wanted to share it because i was in the dark i didn't know how to go about it i i spent a lot of time uh experimenting and it was good because i got stuff off my chest and i learned i got right that's no point or some stuff does look good and it works with Tell you what I have to try is matte phot photographic paper and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so next are items. 
that were found as we went along to fit this chappy. This fell down the back of something. Now, he, as well as anything else, this is a further discussion about watercolours. So this is like a lovely mop round wash from this graduate line by Dale and Rowney. And I think I got it in the range. And I think it was like four or five quid or something. I completely lost it. So I was trying to do large washes <coughs> of watercolour without using a brush that doesn't hold enough water or enough pigment so I was kind of carking out halfway through it and you're not not creating that lovely smooth uninterrupted wash of colour no matter how how sheer it was I was seeing it breaking up in between so I rediscovered that and it's a game changer so happy about that this <clears throat> it's a Tombow calligraph calligraphy superlative calligraphy sort of a it's got is that going to focus let me see yeah it's got kind of a fiber tip with a bit of bounce in it and it's lovely for handwriting it's really gorgeous so there's those they do you know what there was other stuff as well but i'm too embarrassed to talk about them because there was just too much that kept turning up brushes pencils charcoal i mean it was it was an aladdin's cave in a kind of a, <clears throat> not so much a, a no buy, but definitely I'm, I'm taking a different approach to how I buy materials. So, first of all, I'm calling a halt to the theme of yellow because um, I've been searching and searching for a really opaque yellow and have yet to find it. So my most recent purchase was Yellow Light Hansa and I've been using Indian Yellow. And I think I'm just going to have to accept that yellow doesn't come in the opacity that I want it to come in. So I'm just going to have to get over that. Yeah, we've arrived. It's finished. These are nice. They're lovely and vibrant. And I really and the other thing I've realised is I love heavy body acrylics by Liquitex. I'm not going to bother test driving anything else and wasting my money because I like them use them they don't go to waste so there's that with regard to gouaches i've decided to rather than just buying randoms okay they'll always be the ones that you replace but sometimes i go off down tangents and decide i want teal turquoise blue number five or something and no idea why i've bought it so i'm going to stick to sort of palettes little groups that uh I'm going to, they're going to keep me from using 120 different colours and create the dog's dinner. So I took a leaf out of Fran Mentz's book and she kind of sticks to these ice cream, ice cream colours. So there's like a pale green, a oh, pale lavender, cream yellow and this is an ash blue. It's lovely, cool lovely lovely cool <laughs> great blue really like it and these are obviously the artist's acrylic by holbein lovely quality lovely thick consistency um so as i run through colors and use them or as i find i'm not using them i shall stick with it's like trying to find the design that suits you the most. I suppose that's what I'm doing at the moment is thinking ahead about what I'm going to use things for rather than start something and go, oh, I need this, that and the other. No, I'm going to be prompted by what I've got here and not go off and spend stupid money on things that I use twice, decide I don't like it and voila, I've wasted a load of money. So there's those. Now... Things that I definitely won't be buying ever again. And I need to go find some, so I'll be right back. So, <clears throat> I'm on my list of things that I won't be buying again. Caron Bash, Neo Colour, Aquarel, water-soluble water wax pastels. Now, it's nothing to do with the quality, because, let me, it's nothing to do with the quality at all. 
they're lovely they are really gorgeous they um they look like this put down and then sheared out with water they look great i saw lots and lots of people across the internet using them making me feel very uh, intrigued and very drawn to them drawn to the vibrancy so i thought i would invest in the basic starter pack it's not even a starter pack kids it's not even a starter pack it's the absolute bottom of the rungs of basic colors because i'm a basic kind of a person so they suit me just fine however what i came to what occurred to me was they don't suit what i do that's the honest situation right there they're not in my um, armory of things that I like to use. So I've I've called it quits there. Now these yokes, have we seen the huge, huge monster packets of them in, in the pull-out drawers and the presentation teak boxes and whatever for hundreds, is it 200 and something? Very expensive. And even singularly, I think they're like three pounds or something. So I've satisfied my curiosity with these, but again, I don't know if I mentioned they were 15 quid for, yeah, that raised eyebrows here. So no, scratch that itch. I won't be using these again, but it's again, it's nothing to do with the quality. It's just, they don't suit me. Next, now I used oil pastels years ago. I used to love them. So I thought, well, let's see. Let's see if that thing is still there. And I didn't enjoy them. Don't know why. And I used them with... <clears throat> what is it? Is it, you know, like a terps or something? One of those things that breaks up the um, oil in it and you get the pigment left. Uh, they felt very clumsy. They're very rich. They're very vibrant. But um, I don't know. It just didn't suit. So... I won't be getting any more of these. I'll have them on hand just to see if there's like a texture that I can produce with them that I can build in somewhere, but they're not really it for me. So I, I won't be investing in these anymore. But one thing I am going to continue doing and which has been very useful is buying the Polychromos Luminance pencils singularly. And then this is again to, to lay out for the massive amount of them. It's a lot of money. It's like 90 quid. It's more because it can go up to like sets of 64 and beyond. So I've been, what I've been doing, see how pleased I am with myself. <laughs> I'm so pleased with myself. I've been bringing my swatch book, my dictionary of all my things when I'm out and about. So it's just a bit of forward thinking, a bit of forward planning. So I'm not duplicating any of the pencils I have. And I'm able to buy new tones that I know I'm going to incorporate and going to use more of and um, make sure that I'm not um, just spending C, C money. Because again, these guys cost, I mean, the luminance are three pound odd, aren't they? And um, so I haven't found anywhere that I can buy these. The Fa Faber-Castell, the polychroma seem to be everywhere, but the luminance, I haven't, within like search and distance in my own home, I've only been able to sort of buy them online. <clears throat> and I buy them usually from Ken Bromley, usually a good price. Usually a bit of a discount, keep your eyes open. So that's that's the situation with that was a slightly nonsensical buy, but that didn't work out the colour that it looked online. See, see the problem? Gotta have it so I can swatch it. Now the echo lines that I was just to go back to them earlier on, they were a bargain in TK Maxx. Now I saw somewhere that TK Maxx do um reduce, they do art materials, but you never know what's going to be in there. And the majority of it seems to be that Montmartre stuff, which I've got their pastels. No, 
and less said about that the better they were they were silly again i bought them on amazon i wasn't able to swatch them if i'd had them in my hand i don't think i would have walked away from them now echo line look at these pieces they're beautiful i've got the inks in pastel blue and pastel pink and they're gorgeous and i've used them in things and they, they come with the dropper and posh lovely look at that for vibro you know what this brings me to watercolors and uh, i may be i may be done i maybe have to step away from them because i don't know if i've got the skills or what i want them to do they don't do i want I want this, I want it to kind of sizzle and um, when I start putting down layers and layers of pigment with watercolour so I just end up with a muddy mess and I get frustrated and I, I get really frustrated. I'm happy with the gouache and thin layers and the pencils as well but if I, if I stray into the world of watercolours I end up in all kinds of problems. So. These are what I've been using artway. I got these ages ago and I've been making roads into it. Again, it's really simple. I don't need much more than that because I get lost. So I'm going to step away from them for the time being and leave them as they are. So there we have, I know there's other stuff knocking around here that I came across, but I can't put my hand to it right now. But listen, that's everything that I'm either not going to buy again, you know who you are, I will replace, I will definitely, I can you buy the Echo Line singularly, I have to look into that because these are, these are gorgeous, in love, simply fabulous, um, the Fabriano paper and the Hanni Muller are going to be yeah, approached with great caution and uh, yeah I'm going to continue to buy singular pencils. And hopefully, I'm going to be spending my money mindfully, wisely, and with purpose. Isn't that what mindfulness is anyway? So, listen, thank you for joining me. Um, it's uh, Spring is here. Let's get outside and enjoy it while we can. And have a lovely time creating things. I'm just saying words <laughs> Have a lovely time creating things. Have a productive time in the meantime till I see you again. And subscribe and like. Do all of the stuff. Come back and see me again soon. And take care for now. Bye-bye.